Audio. This podcast is called Obsessed. Joseph Scrimshaw and his guest get some secrets off their chest. You should listen. It's the best. Hello and welcome to Obsessed with Joseph Scrimshaw on Feral Audio. I am your host. I am still Joseph Scrimshaw. I hope you are super stressed because this week's episode is all about relaxing to ASMR videos with author and comedian Sarah Benincasa. Now, what are ASMR videos, you might ask? Well, they're autonomous sensory meridian response videos. Do you still wonder what they are? Well, good. You will enjoy listening to this episode. As always, you'll also hear our co-producer Sarah Meyer interviewing random human beings around Los Angeles and seeing how they feel about ASMR videos. Have they heard of them? Do they want to hear of them? Are they confused and frightened when young people invent new things on the World Wide Web? Are they willing to whisper soothing things into a stranger's microphone? We will find out. But before we dive deep into the relaxing world of ASMR videos, it's time to answer a listener-submitted question about their personal obsession. I throw out requests for obsessions like this on my Facebook and Twitter, so if you have an obsession you'd like addressed, just follow me on the social media as at Joseph Scrimshaw. Also, follow me on Snapchat, because all the kids are talking about it these days, and every four weeks I post a weird picture of my face, and who would want to miss out on that? Anyway, listener Kelly McMorrow says, I love Twin Peaks. Why does the real diner have to have shitty coffee and subpar cherry pie? This is a great question and a painful one for me. I am a huge Twin Peaks fan. As a youth, I briefly considered joining the FBI just to be like Special Agent Dale Cooper, but I figured I could never get my hair to look as amazing as his did, and the FBI wouldn't let me in with shitty subpar hair. Now, I assume this question is about the location for the diner in the show, and in the show it's called the Double R Diner, and now it is a diner in real stupid human life that is called Tweeds. The internet tells me it is just a regular diner, Tweeds, that capitalizes on its Twin Peaks fame by serving, quote, Twin Peaks coffee and cherry pie, unquote. As to the question of why they serve shitty coffee and subpar cherry pie, I would say it's because they can. I'm admitting right now that someday I'm going to go to Tweed's, and with full knowledge that the coffee and cherry pie are both crap, I'm still going to order them. When branding like this is involved, idiots like me make it possible for quality to just not be a factor. In fact, they could hold a competition to develop the worst imaginable cherry pie and coffee, and I would still order it. The pie could be like 16 hostess fruit pies smashed with a mallet and crammed in a bowl lined with wonder bread and hate, and I would eat it happily. The coffee could be made in a Holiday Inn hotel room, then run through a car motor to heat it up before it's mixed with the ashes of a dead loved one and stirred with a decades-old Slim Jim, and I'd still be like, Mmm, I'm being a part of Twin Peaks. I just like the show so much, I would be able to bullshit myself that the terrible pie and coffee was actually on purpose. That it's meant to be terrible to fit the theme of duality running through the show. Life and death, love and hate, the White Lodge and the Black cool place shitty pie you can't have one without the other doppelgangers and stuff it all makes sense because in the sleepy yet super violent town of twin peaks the residents enjoy a beautiful life but they pay for it with the darkness in the old woods and in real life when you enjoy visiting an iconic landmark of a beloved television show you pay the terrible price of shitty pie and subpar coffee I don't know if that helped you, Callie, but it certainly helped me. And speaking of the dark price we must pay for the things we enjoy, here are some plugs. This very podcast, Obsessed, is made possible by your kind support on Patreon. If you'd like to help the podcast keep growing and coming out every Thursday, you can sign up by visiting patreon.com slash Joseph Scrimshaw. You'll also get access to our monthly patron-only bonus episodes for just a buck a month. Shows! I do shows! I've always got a lot of different stand-up shows popping up in Los Angeles. Other things coming up in the next few months include more performances of Hal Lublin and I's new comedy game show, Head Cannon. I'll also be in San Francisco at Doc's Lab on June 22nd doing some stand-up and a live recording of Obsessed. And I'll be a guest of honor at Convergence in Minnesota in July, where I'll also do a live episode of Obsessed. Basically, if you see me, 
I will be doing a live episode of Obsessed. I'm going to come to your home and do a live episode of Obsessed, and there's nothing you can do about it. Anyway, for more details on all my shows, be sure to check out josephscrimshaw.com slash live dash shows. But now, sit back. Don't relax. In fact, get very tense so you then can be relaxed by Sarah Benincasa's obsession with ASMR videos. Hello and welcome to Obsessed with me, Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm sitting in my home with an awesome person, Sarah Benincasa. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm remembering my mic skills from my old days in radio. Oh, you did radio? I did. I was a host and, and producer on um, Sirius XM for two years. And um, so I learned that one is supposed to be approximately a fist away from the mic. Oh, that's a nice thought to always have in your mind, isn't <laughs> Picturing it? Picturing a Fist, just always. a fist away. It just sounds a like a away. song from Sound of Music. It really just does. Just a fist away. So, what kind of stuff did you produce there? Was it talk show stuff? Was it yeah? Uh, it was heavy talk. Metal? It was. Um, I did a show called Get in Bed on Cosmo Radio, which oh, cool. doesn't exist anymore. And um, you'd think it would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I was I was there eight to eleven east, five to eight west every weeknight <laughs> for two years, and I learned a lot. For yeah. sure. It was my first job in entertainment. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like you learned from that about entertainment that carries into all the other stuff that you do? I learned that sometimes you need to give up security in favor of being happy. Okay. And that decision was made for me when my show was <laughs> fired. <laughs> and so that was great. Um, I learned that um, radio, much like education... Mm -hmm. And police work attracts the best and the most horrible human beings in the world. And I met some of both. And um, I don't know. I got a bunch of free stuff. And I had fun. I, I had fun most of the time. I feel like cool. all lists of what I learned should end with, and I got free stuff. Yeah, I got free stuff. I got lesson. free sex toys all the time, which was amazing. Was the talk show about sex stuff? Sex, love, and relationships. Okay, good. And it was it was in an earlier incarnation of um, Cosmopolitan. So the, the current editor, Joanna Coles, was not the editor at the time. And so our relationship with the brand was interesting because they were more conservative than they are now. And so now they're so much more queer positive and inclusive and body positive and um, intersectional, I would even say, with regard to feminism and creative. And they're doing, they've are doing they been doing amazing stuff for the past few, several years. But um, it wasn't so amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I, you know, I had, I, there were people that I dug. I, I've certainly liked the editor-in-chief at the time. She was really cool. And I met a lot of people that I dug, especially on the magazine side. And then I met a lot of people I didn't dig on the radio side. <laughs> but it gave me a lasting fondness for working in audio. And yeah. also, I learned that radio and audio now, I would say podcast fans, are incredibly loyal and mm -hmm. are the best fans ever because they are so engaged. And also, when I listen to radio, I'm not just receiving the information visually and orally, A-U-R-A-L-L-Y <laughs> through my ears. Um, I'm, I'm just getting it through my ears. And so I'm co-creating the experience. Right with the the folks who are making the the radio show and i think that's why people get so attached you know there are a lot of people in radio today who um are douchebags who grew up listening to howard stern and not understanding that he is a brilliant interviewer mm -hmm. and just hearing like oh he has girls with naked boobs in studio i'm gonna do that but then he asks them fascinating questions he's a brilliant yeah. man and a brilliant interviewer and um so skilled and i think that I would put Mark Marin up there in terms of someone, you know, he's not necessarily, I don't put him in, in the stern radio kind of world, but although he certainly was in radio for a time, but when you listen to Mark's podcast, you hear how extraordinary an interviewer he is. And I think that, again, you can listen to that and be like, no, he talked to a comedian and they sound, they had a fight with each other or whatever. You can take <laughs> away like the sort of bullshit stuff, but what's actually going on is, um, is a, a, someone who's a master of their craft, which is interviewing. And um, I'm not that great at interviewing. Uh, so I learned that. <laughs> but I, I had fun most of the time. Cool. I mean, I would, I would do it again. Cool. So it seems like from what I know of all the things you do, that radio was a good starting place to do all the different things you do. Can you tell people a little bit about all the different 
things? Because I know you do comedy. Yeah. You're a writer. You've got a book to promote that's out, right? Uh, Real Artists Have Day Jobs um, out April 26th, 2016, but available for pre-order if this comes out before then and uh, available for order if this comes out after then. Cool. It will exist for a while. So Hooray. people can always get your book. Yeah, so buy it. You it's do comedy. You are you have an awesome presence on social media. Oh, thank you. It's just my brain barf. But yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I am, tend to be an early adopter of different, different social media things, which is just to say that I jump on a bandwagon early. Don't always stick with it, <laughs> but I certainly it's good have. to jump off the bandwagon yeah, sometimes, sometimes too. you gotta jump off the bandwagon, but yeah, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's another, that's another way of saying that. Um, I started out in stand-up comedy and I've been a podcaster and a, basically now I mostly write, I write books. Okay. Real artists have day jobs as my fourth book. I'm developing a couple of those books for film and TV. Awesome. So I'm adapting my third book, DC Trip, as a screenplay with um, Albert Berger and Ron Yersa, who did uh, Albert and Ron did Election long ago, and they did, which is one of my favorite movies ever. They they did Little Miss Sunshine, and they did Nebraska, and they have a new one coming out called Louder Than Bombs, and they did a bunch of other stuff like Cold Mountain. Why not? And um, so they <laughs> I know do, these are all real, but they sound like they could be made up. They all do. They do really great work. And then with um, Van Toffler, who has a company called Gunpowder and Sky, and then with Adaptive Studios. And so, uh, sorry, I'm talking like I'm at a meeting because I was just at a meeting. <laughs> but um, so uh, I'm, I'm writing my first screenplay, which is cool. an adaptation of that. And I travel around the country and talk to colleges about things. Cool. Would you say that comedy is the connecting thread of everything yes, that you do? Absolutely. That you have a very comedic outlook. And I, I like your comedic outlook oh, on social media because you talk about things, serious things, but through the language of comedy, which is the way I prefer to perceive the world. Yeah, and I think that you do some of that too, don't you? I try to, yeah. I mean, that's if I'm having a good day, that's what's happening. <laughs> I think that I, I've always believed in the spoonful of sugar method and yeah. that if you want to deliver a message, a great way to do it, if it comes naturally to you, is with humor. Not everything is funny. Right. Everything is funny to somebody, but not everything is funny to everybody. Right. So if the best way for you to talk about something serious, uh, um, like for me, I talk about mental health issues. Um, some people, you know, if they talk about uh, sexual assault, if they talk about crime, if they talk about terrible breakups if they talk about anything that that hurts them and it makes them sad for some of us we find empowerment in being funny about it but yeah. i think the trick is and it's a tricky thing is to never make fun of other survivors of whatever you've been through right like that's that's not obviously you would never go in with the intent but it's easy enough to make fun of yourself and not realize it sounds like you're making fun of anybody who's gone through stuff so you have to always make sure that if you are mocking something it's it's you and you're doing it in a self-deprecating fashion that's right. very clear yeah but i process i think that humor is a way to laugh into the darkness and shrink the demons who live there and the demons will still be there but they'll be smaller if we can laugh at them yeah i always just think of it as an interesting fun way to speak to like literally a language like english is a language and french is a language and like comedy to me is like french it's a little bit more weird and exciting way just to speak like sometimes yeah. even to the point of being weird about it of i just want to say congratulations to my friend that they got a new job but then i'll spend time thinking like how can I say this in a funny way? So it is still <laughs> How can I make this an bit? interesting way and not even a bit because like I need I need the attention kind of bit, not like waka waka waka, but just like I want to say something different than just the standard way of saying it. I right. want to say I, it I, I in French with some ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> I could hop in a four door sedan like I always do and take it from point A to point B. Or I could cartwheel there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I try to do cartwheels. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Uh, yeah, and, and of course it's fun if your friend is hearing a million happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. It's fun if you come in there and you're like, -a -a and then you run away <laughs> and they're terrified, exactly. but it's different. Yeah, and They'll as long as it's you. clear and kind. Uh, so let's get into your obsession. You kindly cool. offered me multiple obsessions, but your first one oh, yeah. that in the list was fascinating to me. It's the ASMR videos. Mm -hmm. ASMR is a made up term. Okay. It stands for autonomic sensory meridian response. Okay. Uh, it was invented on the internet. It's not a science term. And what it means is when you watch 
a certain thing. Everybody has their own triggers. But when you watch something and it makes your head get tingly, some people call it a brain orgasm. I don't call it that because orgasms are way more exciting. <laughs> but um, it's um, it's a pleasurable tingly sensation. Usually starts in your scalp and will run down your spine or it'll run down one side of your body or the other. Some people experience it with greater intensity than others. There is a whole subculture, yeah. sub-subculture. There's a, you know, a, a subreddit devoted to it. Duh. <laughs> of course. And, which I need to get more active on. But anyway, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? But um, it's, uh, so there are all these videos that people make that, and it's usually women. There are some men who make them. There's a guy named Tony Bomboni who's really popular. Um, I don't get tingly feelings from watching his videos, but they are funny and weird. Yeah, I know. I watched a couple to prepare because they're mostly videos. They're mostly on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly uh, women. A lot of times it's women with um, an accent. It's pretty women who are speaking sort of very softly and yes. caring in a caring fashion to you and they're talking about what they bought at the store that day or they're pretending that they're a hairstylist and you're their client there are there's sort of some motifs that get used over and yeah. over again in asmr videos Ultimately, what's the guy's name again uh tony bomboni and i think i watched one and he had a pet name for the audience that was like poopies or pooties or something i don't even remember. it was something I that i had to double check and go like is this a parody of the asmr MR yeah. videos because he just called me something that wasn't relaxing like right off the bat He's ASMR like, videos are inherently a parody of themselves yeah. because they're so stupid and yet so <laughs> fun and wonderful yeah and so I love Maria who does gentle whispering okay and so you can just Google Maria and gentle whispering and you will find her. And she is this beautiful blonde Russian woman who came to the United States many a year ago. Um, but she's quite young. I think she's still in her 20s. And she does these ASMR videos and she's been doing them for years. She just hit 600,000 subscribers. Wow. And she is thanked in uh, the acknowledgments in my next book, Real <laughs> Artists Have Day Jobs, because she chills me out. So is that how you got hooked? What was your beginning with the ASMR videos? How did you discover them? I think that possibly I saw a parody video. My friend Anna Sergina did as a comedian, and she did a funny parody video. So I don't know if I saw that first or what. I don't know how I found stumbled onto them. Perhaps I was watching Molly Shannon on a talk show. Okay. I, maybe she was on Jimmy Fallon's show pre-Tonight Show. I can't remember what show she was on. And she was talking about it and how when she goes through TSA and gets the pat down, she gets the tingly feeling. <laughs> and it's not necessarily a sexual feeling for right. me it's not erotic it's sensual but it's not erotic so i don't feel a response in my lady parts um i feel it feels like um the same kind of pleasure you might take from a good massage okay so so you heard about it from molly shannon i guess so i guess it was from her and then did you go specifically and look for ones or did you have a specific video that hooked you and gave you the tingly sensation i i think i must have googled it and then the one that i hit on is a really popular one that it's gentle whispering maria's most popular one um so if you go to her i think it's youtube.com slash gentle whispering okay it might be gentle whispering asmr i'm not sure i think it's just gentle whispering i can actually look it up right now and her most popular upload ever is something she did like three or four years ago and it's just her in front of what may or may not be like a shower curtain and she's you know talking to you about how she's going to do certain things to help you sleep better and they include lighting a candle and just speaking really softly in her very soft accent that I can't really imitate i don't know who i sound like she doesn't sound like this um i am thinking yeah she's just gentle whispering on okay. youtube i'm sending this information to you right now via text <laughs> so her the video that i love it currently as of as of this recording has 14 million seven hundred seventy one thousand two hundred seventy one views so popular and uh that is oh such a good 3d sound asmr video <laughs> let's see when it was put up it was put up Oh, it was a uh, 2012. So it's, you know, as of this recording. Sort of the beginning of the phenomenon, pretty much. Yeah. And um, she's just really killing it. But she'd been doing them for a while. So you like that one. So yeah, what, love it. Tell, tell me fan. about the uh, the effects for you. For me, I can tell you the first time I experienced ASMR, it didn't have that name then. Okay. Because I don't think the internet was invented. But I was watching uh, Fairy Tale Theater with Shelley Duvall. And there was an episode, the Snow White episode, where... A red grave plays <laughs> plays uh, the wicked witch, I think. Okay. And there was a moment where she's 
disguised as a peddler woman who I think chokes out Snow White with ribbons or something. <laughs> and anyway, <laughs> so it's not sounding very peaceful out, so far. Um, but she 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 shows up and she's very lovely and attentive and Snow White really responds to her because she's paying a lot of attention to her and telling her how beautiful she is and they're playing like, you know, harp or harpsichord or some shit in the background. <laughs> very different instruments, but whatever. And um, I just remember I would get like brain tingles every time she arrived. So when you say brain tingles, do you mean like a stimulation of your scalp? Yes, a okay. stimulation of my scalp, yeah. And does it, for you, does it go beyond your scalp? Because I was reading on Wikipedia about like the ideal movement through your body for super successful ASMR videos <laughs> that it starts in your scalp and then goes down your spine and like ends sort of at your coccyx. It ends but at your not, ass. Yeah, not too low. Uh, yeah, I've had that experience. A lot of times it goes, it goes, it'll just be like sort of located in my scalp, but sometimes it will go from my scalp or it'll start at the base of my brain, um, and go, travel on down. Sometimes it, it doesn't even start there. Sometimes it starts, um, in my shoulder. Okay. Or down my arm. So when, when the red grave first triggered this response <laughs> in your brain. red grave <laughs> When a red grave triggered this positive uh, physical response. Did that lodge in your brain and say, I want to feel that feeling again? No. I, well, yes, but I didn't think of it as an unusual feeling. I thought, oh, well, I guess this is just how people feel sometimes when they see something cool. Yeah. So I used to say that when I saw something that I really loved, really, that was really special... Especially if it hit me on some kind of spiritual level. Like, yeah. I think the fact that she was a witch was very interesting to me. The whole okay. idea of conjuring and sorcery, that I would it would make my head tingle, make the top of my head tingle. And right. I would bring that up, and some people would relate and some people wouldn't. But, you know, it was just sort of a part of my world, and and just, your, you know, your normal is just your normal. Yeah. So you think it's everybody else's normal. And it wasn't until I saw Molly Shannon talking about this ASMR thing that I was like, Wait, do I? Is that what that is? Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense to me that people would have just thought of that as a physical thing that happens. Now that you are talking about it, I remembered, I think, the first time that I had that. And it was, I used to live in a small town in Minnesota when I was very young. And sometimes the comic books I was collecting wouldn't come to like the Mm 7-Eleven. And like the first time that my mom took me to the big city to a comic book shop and said, you can look for comic books. And I found like, a back issue that I never had That's seen awesome. before, never had access to before. Uh, what What do you remember? What shop it was in Minneapolis? It was called Shinders. Are they still there? Uh, no, Shinders has sadly closed down. R. It was in a rough part of town, and my mother was very concerned. So there was this <laughs> added tension. Like I think it's about context. There's this added tension where my mother knew it meant the world to me that I not miss this episode of Teen Titans, this issue of Teen Titans. But she was very concerned that if I touched the floor. Like with my knees, <laughs> even I would pick up some sort of knee disease or something. So yeah. there was this tension, and then there's just the 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 joy of this thing that I thought I couldn't have, and mm-hmm. not at all sexual uh, yeah. thing. Uh, and then it set that off. So the, I think the interesting thing to me is of the ASMR videos is that idea that random experiences are going to trigger that physical sensation, but the idea that you could watch a video and plan that sensation is new yes i find that to be new because i never i never sought it out before it was this magical thing that just happened yeah but i think there is a real you know it's a biologically based response to something that occurs yeah and i think in your case the fact that there was a relief of tension and a reward and it was also um you were walking into something magical wonderland yeah. fairyland and that um your mother was taking care of you and, and and that's what a lot of the asmr videos are about it's about someone taking care of you yeah and looking after you and giving you attention and being loving and i started watching them in earnest um i guess when i went through a breakup not even a year ago okay and so i think that's when i really dove in <laughs> and you just needed so the you needed soothing yeah i needed soothing and i needed to I needed an escape from the sadness and the, you know, the concern, the regret, the fear, yeah, yeah. the, you know, all the different things that you feel during that time, along with the relief and the belief that this is the best thing for both people. You know, you don't need to escape from that. That's, no. the, that's the good part of a breakup, <laughs> if, if anything can be said to be good about a breakup. I read, or I remember Louis C.K. doing a bit where he talked about how he got divorced and the audience was like, oh, and he was like, no, don't do that. Um, a divorce is never a bad thing. <laughs> and I understood what he was saying because even though breakups are painful and sad and difficult, they happen for a reason. 
you don't want to be with somebody who isn't fully committed to you. Right. They don't want to be with somebody who isn't fully committed to them. It's so, sad, but it can be a very good sad. Yeah. I mean, sometimes taking a shit feels weird, but afterwards you're like, <laughs> sweet. Um, <laughs> and now I'm always going to think of taking a shit as a divorce. So. That's great. That's we, what We were is. together, and now we need to go our separate I ways, and that's for the best. This is better. We're parting <laughs> ways here. So, yeah, I guess I found it ASMR soothing during a breakup, and it was certainly helpful to me when I was trying to write this book. I I was having a lot of problems with writer's block in 2015, and that was not a great time in my life to have writer's block because I had to um, finish a DC trip, my my novel, and then I had to start adapting it as a screenplay which I'd never done before I'd never adapted for film I'd done it for television but not for film and then I also um had to negotiate a breakup and then I also gosh what else was going on then you know you have your personal life right so uh, you supposedly and you had a lot of soothing that yeah, needed to be done for sure I was depressed and I was not really giving any attention to my relationship at the time and I was not fun to be around yeah and um yeah, it was kind of, it was difficult. In some ways, it was a very successful year, but in other ways, it was really difficult. And this provided an outlet for cool. me to just relax. I was watching some and I was reading some about them. Uh, so I, I had a full sense of it. And I was really fascinated by the variety of kind of sounds that people find soothing. Yeah, they so. love tapping. Oh, you want, can I do one? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's yeah. going to sound on here, but people love um, tapping. So it's a lot of like, hey, look, how are you? It's so great to see you today. You're really beautiful. Look, I brought you this iPhone. And then everybody's like, ah. It's a lot of tapping, whispering. Yeah. Sometimes it's nonsense whispering, which really annoys me. When yeah. Just like, I'm like, what are you doing? Stop it. Yeah, a couple of the weird ones that I came across, and I wanted to ask you if they actually worked for you. Uh, wiping and cleaning sounds? No. Gross. <laughs> I mean, I guess if I grew up with a mother who cleaned, maybe I would have some positive association with it or negative, but uh, yeah. no. Because it's, it's fascinating to me that some of them are really human things, like speaking quietly or being soothed. Like mm-hmm. every human will relate to that. But then uh, everybody else has their like their red grave or comic book at Schinders yeah. human strange context where things make sense to them. Another one was towel folding. Towel folding doesn't get me. Maria from Gentle Whispering has a great towel folding video. (laughs) But it's just not my thing. I mean, I did learn some interesting stuff about how to make cool towel arrangements. But, um, you know, it's like just not my thing. Was she making like animals like on a cruise ship out of towels? I wish. No, she was making these sort of towel rolls where you roll one towel inside another towel and it looks like sort of an adorable sushi towel. And that may have led me to purchasing... A whole series of sushi baby towels (laughs) last year from Etsy. Like everybody I knew who had a baby, like my, I think my agent Doug, I sent one to. Neil Gaiman had a baby with Man Upon. I sent them one. Like I sent, um, God, uh, my friend, I had another friend who who had it. Like a lot of people got sushi baby towels for me. Are these towels that make it look as though the baby is the fish inside of a sushi wrap? No, although that's a great idea. (laughs) They took, they take, they take a sushi like, box that you would get not a fancy bento box but a sushi kind of takeaway box and in it they put little baby towels that are rolled up so that you know it looks like there's like a baby towel on the outside that's Mm -hmm. green and then there's a white one on the inside and then the very inside center representing the fish there's like a pink one or whatever and it comes with chopsticks and it's adorable (laughs) and i just lost my shit and like everyone i probably bought four or five of them last year i think i got i think i got the one for neil and amanda first and then after that i was just like Holy shit, dude! Everyone I know is getting these. Start having yeah. kids. Do you, so? Do you like getting gifts for oh, people, yeah. babies, or is it stressful to you that the world is suddenly around you multiplying? No, I like it. I like giving them baby stuff, but I want to give them something useful. I right. want it to be something ideally cute, mm-hmm. but something that they can use too. And what I found from the, I guess, like four or five couples that I sent the sushi thing to. Oh, my friend Ron too. I'm just all these. Maybe it was like six. Um, what I found was that they think it's so cool looking they don't actually use them okay so but you could use them you could use them yeah and hopefully they will lead to some soothing uh speaking of sushi the one uh, asmr video that was the weirdest to me was subtle eating ew how, how do, have you sounds. have you tried the food sounds no chewing sounds disgust me yeah it sounds disgust me um a big open mouth gum chewer is gonna make <laughs> me want to throw myself off a bridge 
or them off a bridge into a fiery inferno of hell where they belong. I no, I hate that. The hate the subtlety. Good. Not well. I made a judgment. I'm a bad person. I made a judgment. The You're subtle eating is person. really weird to me. You're a smart person with yeah, opinions. If the if that soothes you, great. But man, yeah, subtle it's great eating if it is weird. soothes you. Uh, for me, I'm just like, ugh. But you know, everybody's got their something, right? Some people are like, why do you like tapping? Yeah. Weirdo. Tapping, I don't, I guess tapping, I maybe understand is just a totally biological, like there's something coming, but it's not dangerous, maybe. But tapping to me is the, when I think soothing, I think like amniotic, like flowing. Mm. So somebody whispering to me, calmly doing something I can get, but like somebody tapping on me, that's like... That's like, there's something in your inbox. That's stressful to me. <laughs> it's not, for me, it's not typing. Like typing stresses me out, but just tapping on an object with like long, lovely fingernails, I think gives me the very sort of soothing, like, oh, some sort of feminine presence is going okay. to do something. So, caring. and that's a visual, that, I think that's the first time you've mentioned a visual aspect of the ASMR videos. Yeah, I'm also, I also like when they make um, gentle, hand, delicate hand movements in front of the camera. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm not. There's one dude who does ASMR who's Australian who gives massages that I can kind of get into, but mostly, um, mostly it's women. It's the, the sort of feminine nurturing aspect. Yeah. That I'm into and I suppose if there were um, a a gentleman or someone who identified as a gentleman who did an ASMR video but was employing a lot of what some people call yin energy um or was being very soothing and nurturing uh, maybe that would get me but yeah. I, I like knowing that it's a a gal and whether and when i say gal i don't mean like a cis lady like it can be you know a a, a trans gal mm-hmm. so the appropriate term is a trans gal uh a cis gal uh whatever gal but ch- i don't know what it is i don't know what it is about that what yeah. it is about that aspect of the binary that I'm so locked into, guys. Maybe it's the Redgrave attachment Probably. from early on. But it, do, you, do you think it is because of the stereotypes of maternal in that mm, yeah, the probably. female is soothing and that the male, even if it's soothing, is still not the same stereotype, certainly, that we grew up with? Yeah, and it's not that I, I object to, you know, I certainly dated men. I've um, had massages from men. I've had sexual relations with men. You know, I have many male friends. My dad is a man, so is my brother. <laughs> it's not some, ob- you know, it's interesting. It's not some objection to to dudes. And um, I find it fascinating. Sometimes uh, if I really want to sort of z- chill out, I will watch a video of someone doing calligraphy okay. or someone you know someone crafting something carving wood or something like that some craft videos process videos and with that it doesn't matter to me if i'm just looking to kind of zone out yeah but specifically that asmr tingly feeling that is it almost always it's it, there's a woman doing something and that's what's yeah. causing it so like everything that ever gets invented uh, there's a sexual version mm-hmm. and that i haven't watched any of them so you haven't watched no. any of those okay i tried watching just a couple because i wanted to know what it was what and happens? i found the they whole thing fascinating off? What goes on? no it, it is the it's a logical extension of what they what the videos already are which is fascinating to me because that relaxing and soothing can easily lead to sexual. Sure, and it can like, go to an arousing place. You know, the original name for this thing was brain orgasm, and then people were like, that's too sexy, so we'll call it a meridian, because yeah. that's the least sexy word in the world. So I'm not surprised, because many things people try to create the sexual version of, but it was an extension. I watched, uh, I wrote it down, I watched Ultimate Ear Licking. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! title cracked me up. Yeah! And Sensual Lollipop. Okay, well, I like lollipops. Yeah. Do they do sex acts on camera? No, not at all. It is the same soothing, the whispered voice. Like Mm -hmm. the ultimate ear licking was like, hello. (laughs) Have you had a long day? I've had a long day. I'm going to lick your ear. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to lick your ear a little bit. I'm Buffalo Bill. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It puts the lotion in the basket. Exactly. Yeah. um, Original ASMR. (laughs) ASM artist. uh, Buffalo Bill. And the fascinating thing about it to me was it well, it wasn't for me. I'm looking up sensual. I'm not going to turn the sound on, but I'm looking. I want the audience at home to know where, where to I'm, find ultimate I am ear licking. Very much looking up sensual lollipop right now. So the ultimate ear licking was there are a couple things that were interesting to me about it. A, it was clearly sexual, but it was not at all aggressive. Which it's cool to see something in the world that's uh, portraying sexuality that's not as like aggressive as a lot of porn traditionally is. But also the weird thing about it is it was the totally honest noises of ear licking, which there are lots of gross noises in that that you recognize of 
if that happens in in real life, those would be the sounds, but it feels and sounds gross to hear them on YouTube. So yeah, it's called ASMRotica. Uh huh. Um, so I'm looking at ultimate ear licking, and of course it's very it's sound based, but I don't have the sound turned on. I just want to see what the visual is because watching ASMR videos without let's see, it's why Layla love ASMRotica. Yeah, she's super cute. She's she has pretty. a lot. Yeah. Um, she's got tats. You know, probably has a troubled relationship with her dad. Um, great, like, really great lipstick, really cool haircut, very pretty girl. Like, I don't know, maybe Suicide Girls wasn't an option. Um, I would hang with her. She seems awesome. We could talk about, you know, a lot of emotional issues that we probably share. Uh, let me look. At, okay, Sensual Lollipop. Is sensual the Lollipop. One. Now, Sensual Lollipop, very important to know is, and this is also Layla Love ASMR Rotica. It's L-O-L-I-P-O-P, which I object to. Already, I'm not... <laughs> now, why does that offend you? It should Do you have be strong two, opinions? Two L's. Two yes. L-O-L-L-I-P-O-P. How would you pronounce it based on how it's spelled? Lollipop? Is that her <laughs> real name? I don't even know. Sensual Lollipop is a great anime. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's stunning. I might masturbate to these later. Um, but, you know, it's just... It, it kind of messes with my fondness for... ASMR so I'm sure and a lot of people whenever they're in some kind of like weird subculture of freaks as I am in a few um, I think that some people are always going to want to try and legitimize it and make it more mainstream so that people will like it more right and so they want they don't want stuff like this because they're like oh no that makes it dirty and what but but you know Whatever. It's, yeah it's not it, it as something that gets turned sexual goes it's not dirty any of the ones that I watched um, it's, the, almost, it's, it's, the, it's, it's too it's ridiculous. Kind of thing. It's too ridiculous to get dirty because, like, the sensual lollipop—that's like the stereotype of sexual. Of oh, a, a girl on a video is gonna suck She's on a lollipop. Lick a lollipop. But the first thing that happens is lots of very loud crinkling of opening it. And to me, that's just like, like it's beautifully on. funny, but, but not at all sexual. A to lot me. of ASMR people like. Crinkles. Soft crinkling, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or allowed even. Uh, somebody will be like messing with a bag of chips for a full ten minutes. <laughs> that's what I was gonna. Ask. That's a question I wanted to ask you. <laughs> is can you imagine any version of an ASMR video that would give you the tingly feeling that is based on a loud sound for you personally? That would give me tingles. No, it has to be. I would say a moderate to soft sound. It has to be soft because I think if it's a loud sound, it would likely be quite. It, it could be overwhelming or irritating and. For me, ASMR stuff that's fun is not overwhelming or irritating in any way. It's, right. Uh, I enjoy loud, loud music can be great. Um, you know, I was just thinking about like the fireworks when you go to Disney and they're loud, but it's really fun. But And I wouldn't call that soothing, though. Right. So you wouldn't want loud towel folding. That would not relax you in any way. No, it would not. <laughs> uh, close sounds are different. You know, okay. a lot of ASMR videos are best watched with really good headphones on. And some of them, the sound is shitty. It's just somebody in front of their webcam yeah. like, <laughs> tapping on a book. But some of them are quite, you know, they the, the folks who do them really invest in audio equipment yeah. and in sound. And you're watching it on YouTube, of course, so you have to deal with the limitations of, of what they can offer with audio. But some of them are quite lovely. Yeah, yeah. And it adds that intimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also going to ask you if you could get any famous person to make you an... ASMR video who would do it and what would they be doing I can't it can't be somebody who I know personally or who I have listened to a lot before because that'll be that would be weird for right. me so you wouldn't want Neil Gaiman or anything no although he would be the perfect <laughs> ASM artist <laughs> yes his voice is already like, very soothing hello now we will talk about that's terrible that's I can't do an impression of him that's awful um I think it would have to be someone I'm a fan of but that I have some degree of distance from um in terms of like I don't have any idea what their personality might okay. actually be like. So, um, there's that's most famous people, <laughs> but um, I think that I enjoy Madonna's speaking voice. Oh, okay. Um, including her like quasi English inflection. I'm a fan. Um, Audrey Hepburn would have been a great one. Yeah. She's got this like. Ming, who's sort of <laughs> Dutch and combined with everything else accent. Yes, she, and is very you know, lilting. Yeah, I mean, she grew up in the Netherlands and started out, you know, doing work there, but then v rapidly sort of sort of going all over the world. And so her accent is really kind of commingled, um, a bunch of accents. 
Uh, I would say those are two great ones. As far as a lot, who could I get? You know, who's yeah. an easy get? Like, I want to book them. Who's a val- You know, who's got the good avails How right about, now? You mentioned when I asked you what you were obsessed with, you included Joe Biden. Would you want to see a Joe Biden ASMR video? No, because he's above that. Okay. You know, that's uh, ASMR to me is low art. Joe okay. Biden's existence is high art by its nature. Like his existence <laughs> should be in a very uh, wonderful exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art that you have to pay a lot of money to get into and uh, or do suggested donation. Okay. But no, I you know, there's only certain people who I would want that sort of nurturing Right. So from. Madonna has a little bit of distance because she we, we, as a culture, kind of know who she is, but she's always put on a little bit of an act, so you have that distance mm-hmm. that you and want. And she's, her, her di- various professional incarnations are very interesting to me. I yeah. find her to be, she's also always engaged with art, with yeah. the art world, with performance art, right. and with, some people look at it as co-opting, but I think that I've seen her, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not a completist, but I've certainly <laughs> seen her incorporate a lot of cool stuff. So if Madonna was doing an ASMR video, mm-hmm. would she be tapping on something? Yeah, she'd be tapping on stuff, um, whatever she wanted to, really. You okay. know, it's, it's whatever. Like, you can't put Madonna in a box. You can't say Madonna. <laughs> you'll be tapping on something, and then you'll be gently whispering to me about your life. Like, you just, I don't know, maybe she needs to tell me about being in dance class back in, you know, Minnesota or Michigan, Min- Michigan when she was a kid. Maybe she needs to recite some poetry. I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> so you don't want to tell her what to do? No, I don't want to have that kind of control because I feel like Madonna needs to be free. And is that <laughs> is that true about all ASMR that you think you're only going to get the best experience for it yourself if you don't know what's coming? Well, I will rewatch videos over and over and over again because I do know what's coming okay. and I like it. So I have my specific triggers that I like the most. I don't, I've never put in a request or anything. A lot of people will put in requests. Oh, really? And then, uh, yeah, a lot of the, the bigger people on YouTube in the ASMR vein. And I think that Maria of Gentle Whispering is the biggest one. Okay. There's also ASMR requests, which is a big one. There's someone named Heather Feather who I don't get brain tingles f- from, but she seems really funny. And I, they seem to, they get, they seem pretty engaged with their, with their fans. Okay. So what's your whisper friend's name? Uh oh, she's not my friend, but I want her to be. Her name is Maria Gentle Maria. Whispering. Okay. Well, I'm I'm said friend because I was wondering if you would ever reach out to her. Yeah, like, I probably will. I mean, I threw her some money the other day cuz they most of them have like a, you know, donate button or whatever. Okay. So I didn't I didn't give her a lot, but I I did some because I it's a lot of free content and I'm an artist and I yeah. like when people pay for shit. I mean, my books, like any books, my my books get pirated and um Certainly the same thing happens for musicians and whatever. So obviously she has an, you know, is is a YouTube partner and is making some money in whatever way they're doing that right now, whether it's pre-roll. When they enable pre-roll on ASMR videos, it is really annoying, though, because you're like, it's so <laughs> jarring. It'll be somebody just like, wow, buy Hormel snacks. Blah! And then they're like, hello, welcome. Step into a Slim Jim. Exactly. Ow. And then it's like, hello, darling. Relax. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and you see that more on if you're looking at it for mobile rather than um, watching it on, you know, your desktop, your laptop or whatever. Who has a desktop? <laughs> yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably, I need to actually email her and give her a heads up that there's a thank you in Real Artists Have Day Jobs. I should send cool. her one. So I'll, I'll, maybe I'll email her today and be like, hey. Yeah, but thank you. Would you be willing to plug your book in the style of ASMR? Absolutely. Tell the audience what your book is about in a soft, gentle whisper while tapping things. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Hello. How are you? Are you stressed? Well, I'm so glad you're here because this is an ASMR video. You know, I always wanted to be an actress, but it didn't work out. So I'm doing this. Hey, I wrote a book. It's really good. It's called Real Artists Have Day Jobs, and it's available online. It's available on Amazon. It's available through IndieBound. It's available on Walmart.com, but don't buy it there because it's fucking garbage. It's a garbage company from hell, and I like Arkansas, but I hate Walmart. Okay. You could get it from Barnes and Noble. I suggest you contact a local independent bookseller and order it or pre-order Real Artists Have Day Jobs. Just talk to them on the phone. They'll get it for you. 
thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank That's you. great. You fucking killed it. Uh, yeah, I got a tingle when you said uh, fucking Walmart. So I guess yeah. that tells me something about myself. You love capitalism. <laughs> and you love child labor. And I labor. hate Walmart. <laughs> Have you ever heard of ASMR videos? No, no. Have you ever heard of ASMR videos? Nope. No, I have not. ASMR is a team, is a band. Oh, okay. I watch Too Cute. Have you ever watched that? No, what's that? It's like uh, little animals, like little cats and little like puppy dogs, and they're just too cute. It's narrated by some like calm speaking guy. Whenever I'm all upset and annoyed, I'm like, I gotta watch some Too Cute on YouTube. Would you watch a video of somebody just whispering? Probably not. Sure, I'll give it a try. And then if I like it, I would continue to watch it. If I don't like it, I would not watch it ever again. <laughs> yeah. So can you think of a time in your life uh, that's made your spine tingle? Uh, well, well, it's a lot of times happens during uh, lovemaking. <laughs> Would you watch a video of Joe Biden talking softly while folding towels? If there's something funny at the end, yeah, I would totally watch it. But, okay, you fold these towels. I, I don't know. I'd, no, I probably wouldn't watch that. If you could listen to somebody whisper something to you to relax you, what would you want them to whisper? Dog mate in your ear. What does that mean? That, that's his name. Oh, your name's your name's Dogmeat. Yeah, my name, my nickname's Dogmeat. And you like to whisper in people's ears? I mean, I'll whisper in Jack's ear. This is Jack. Uh, but no, nobody else. Oh, you know, I'll do it to creep someone out, maybe. But that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna move on to the how obsessed are you questions. Great, I love it. I'm excited. Do you think about ASMR videos every day? Yes. Do you watch them every day? Almost. I would say if we're talking an average seven-day week, I'm probably going to be watching them five days out of the week. Okay. Have you ever had one let you down where you've been like really stressed and you cue one up and you know this one usually works and it, it doesn't give you the tingly feeling and it actually upsets you? No. I've had ASM artists who I usually really like. I've watched their stuff and been like, this, is, this isn't working This is for subpar. Me. But I know it's working for somebody else. Okay. Would you start a conversation with a random stranger about ASMR videos? In what neighborhood? In, am I in Los Angeles? Where am I? Yeah, you're in Los Angeles. I'm in Los, oh, totally. I would start a random conversation about foot fetishes or buttholes <laughs> in this fucking town. Yes. Uh, knowing you mostly from social media, <laughs> we've met a little bit in person, but no, mostly from social media, you seem like you would you would talk to anybody. Yeah. and, and Is that true in real yeah, life? Yeah. It's been, I mean, yeah, and it's it's been great. I, I learned that from my mom, and it's great because I've, I've made friends that way, Um uh, dated people because of that and I've also just gotten to hear a lot of interesting stories I've been talking a lot on this podcast because I'm being interviewed but um, I actually really love to listen to other people's stories and okay cool so that's me engaging with other people is mostly so that I can um, in some get them to tell me a story and okay. I can learn a little more about them so if you saw someone out and about in Los Angeles and there was something that let you know they were also into ASMR videos. Oh, I'd go right up to them. them. What, what would that be? Uh, it would be How? like probably a gentle whispering t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> she should do merch. I don't know if she does. But if I saw someone with a gentle whispering Maria t-shirt, yeah. I'd make a beeline and mm -hmm. be like, let's talk. I would imagine it's like a big fluffy sweater and gentle whispering is just really small gentle right in the center. <laughs> Hello, this is Maria. It's wonderful to see you today. I am just here in my home and I thought that I would make a video, video, where you, I'm getting the accent now, where you are ready to watch me look at my nail polishes. <laughs> would you ask them about what they like in ASMR videos? So would you sort of interview them if you struck up a conversation oh, with yeah. your gentle I mean, whispers? We, we'd have to swap Fine. tales about our favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Find out if they like subtle eating. I also would ask, where do you think that comes from? Because I am intrigued by where, where does it come from? Someone's particular triggers. Yeah. It's sort of the opposite of PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> it's like happy stuff. Um, and, and it's, it's post great. Not stress fun Most time. great awesome funds. Yeah. And ASMR is the opposite of PTSD. Yeah. I'll go on the record as saying that. <laughs> Would you watch an ASMR video made by Michael Bay? 
Yeah, totally. You'd give it a chance? Yeah. I mean, is he just sort of like gently blowing things up? Like yeah. really slowly? I think maybe he's telling you really slowly what's going to happen in the next Transformers movie. Oh, yeah. He's movie. like explaining. It's a maybe long he's explaining tracking like special shot effects. of the robot leg. I will watch. Up the robot at, balls. I will watch at least 30% of anything he does. Okay. So uh, because I'm, it's going to be visually exciting. And, uh, you know, at some point, if I need a plot, I'll look for that and then I'll go somewhere else. But if I don't, whatever. I mean, I love his shit, man. I would hang out with that dude. I'd be like, let's blow shut up. <laughs> like, I would write a movie. Listen, I'm, I'm in the Writers Guild of America, Michael, and I know you're listening. I will write a movie for you based exclusively on the weird type of dynamite you want to try out. That you've done yet. I'll build a fuck it. We'll win an Oscar. Special Dynamite by yeah, Sarah Ben Cosmo. Totally. Nice. Would you break up with someone who just hated ASMR videos? No, because I totally respect that viewpoint. Okay. I, I mean, they're weird. Uh, actually, the last two people I've dated really didn't like them. They thought they were weird. And I get, I get that. Did you have conversations with them about how they were weird? Or did you just accept mm-hmm. that? No, no, no. They, I, I was like, oh, I love watching them. And I told them about it. And they looked and were like, oh, no. Was it that they didn't like them for themselves? Or did they not like you getting something emotionally from them? Oh, no, no. Them? They were fine with me doing, doing So it that. wasn't like they felt like you were cheating on them with YouTube? Oh, no. No, that would be super possessive and creepy. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a reason to run in the opposite direction. No, they just understood that they kind of chilled me out, like listening to a relaxation, relaxing music. Okay. But it, they were just like, this is not for me. Yeah, they were like, that creeps me out. Because if you're if you're not open to it, first of all, if you if you never experienced it, um, the feeling, of course, you're going to be like, what the fuck? And you're not going to be open to it. Right. Because who knows if you are going to feel it. So what's the point? Right. So you don't enter into that sort of contract with the feeling of like, all right, I will give you five minutes of my time and perhaps I'll get this pleasurable sensation that I have wonderful memories of. Right. You're just going, I don't know. I've heard this weird stuff. and I guess I'll try it. And it is so ridiculous. If you're, I mean, when your critical mind is on, your critical thinking cap is on, of course, it's stupid. If you're yeah. watching it the way you would watch a narrative film, you're going to be very bored and but possibly amused for like five minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. It's maybe. a very vulnerable thing because it is asking someone to physically affect you from across the internet, mm-hmm. which is scary. Uh, but then also, yeah, turning off your thinky brain mm-hmm. and just letting yourself be totally open yeah. is, is pretty vulnerable. And, and there's plenty of things I don't love that other people love. So I don't need everybody who I love to love all of the things that I love. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to put that on a (laughs) t-shirt. So this uh, question kind of goes along with that, but is much weirder. If you couldn't watch ASMR videos without someone out in the world first being punched in the crotch, would you still watch ASMR videos? Do they like being punched in the crotch? Sure. Let's say in this scenario. Is that their fetish? Sure. If they want to be punched in the crotch, absolutely, I will proceed. But if they don't want to, and if this is a random crotch punching, I mean, I don't want violence to be done to people so that I can get my rocks off. Okay. But if people are like, I consensually want someone to punch me in the crotch every time Sarah Benincasa watches an ASMR (laughs) video, and that's like their particular, very specific fetish, cool. I will participate in that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a two for one then. No, that's great. That's That's great. great. I'm doing something great for somebody else. You know, I'm a job creator, essentially, at that point. <laughs> and it's also really nice to imagine somebody on YouTube whispering, hello, and then someone else getting bunched in the garage I mean, in that same hilarious. moment. Yeah. They have to be of age, though. They oh, of course. Of, age. of course. Of Fully course. Fully consenting, sound mind and body, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so I always ask people to make a noise to sum up their obsession. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's harder, but with ASMR videos, it seems there's a plethora of noises to choose mm-hmm. from. But for your personal obsession, your engagement with ASMR videos, what noise would you want to make to sum it all up? <sighs> nice so mostly calm mostly mm-hmm. settled yeah and then what was what was that little bit of more noise at the end i think that was just a button you know it's what yeah. we in the industry <laughs> call a, a but a tag it was a tag is a tag a button or a tag a button or a tag yeah. picked it up on the old radio show mm-hmm. nice so peaceful with a tag mm-hmm. that's very good uh, so i've been rating people's obsessions great i love that that's Uh, exciting i like being evaluated based on numbers (laughs) yeah so i think i'm gonna give you uh well first i'm gonna decide how i'm what i'm gonna use to quantify it Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna say seven sushi towels (gasps) love it so uh, you you can get up to seven sushi towels and I think you're at about a three of sushi towels. Oh, so I'm not like super crazy obsessed. No, I don't think That's you're super great. obsessed. It's more of a, a fondness. It's a fondness because it's clearly something that is right now a part of your day-to-day life mostly. It serves a distinct purpose. You've given it a lot of thought, but you're also very objective about it and have distance from it and can see it for what it is. Mm, yes, yes, yes. And you're true. not so like, 
I'm so into ASMR videos that I'm gonna I'm gonna force myself to like the sensual eating ones. It's true. I I, w- I suppose that hmm, I would my higher on the the Kinsey obsession scale. <laughs> uh, if you catch me in the midst of a really great you know run of Game of Thrones episodes or um, Fargo season one or two episodes like True Detective season one. Um, certainly, you know, when I first started watching the people versus OJ Simpson, American crime story, like I would say that it, when I'm in the midst of a great run of episodes in a TV series, that's where I would be higher on the scale. I might, okay. I might be at say, uh, a four or a five, okay. a five in an extreme case, but, um, but that's inconsistent. Whereas ASMR, it's been pretty consistent over yeah. the past, like, mm, let's say, nine months okay so it's a nice steady obsession (laughs) yes and that's why i chose that one because i also wanted something that people could explore on their own and i thought maybe some people who listen to the podcast might want to look at them and find the videos really funny and some might really enjoy them might be quite surprised to enjoy them yeah yeah when i watched them to research i found them mostly funny and i think was not willing to open myself up to it that's okay uh but, but I know that about myself. I know when I'm willing to bring my walls down and when I'm not. Uh, but, you know, talking about my Schindler's experience, and with it's a, it's both a joke and true. When you said the funny thing about Walmart <laughs> in the soft, relaxing voice, it really did give me a nice little tingle. You, so maybe that was I'll either, see... you either are very into Walmart or you, you hate uh, abusive multinational corporations and loved that I hated it and you got a tingle because we were you were like oh we're supposed to be friends I think it's because you it was calming and soothing but then you said something funny and that's all the things that I like oh yeah that's great that's calming and, and soothing and comedy and that's when you hit on those sort of big themes and deliver them in a pleasurable fashion yeah or pleasant fashion that's I think what ASMR is yeah it, it has to bring up memories of good things in yeah your, in your body in some way maybe I'll try to do some ASMR stand-up I think yeah, that would be get, very, very challenging. Get up at the store the next day and be like, hey, everyone, it's really great to be here. My name is Joseph Scrimshaw. Have you ever noticed that men and women are really quite different? Why don't they make <laughs> the whole ASMR video out of the black box? <laughs> That's your closer. That's a big nice, one. Nice. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can find you on the social media? Yes. I am at sarahbenincasa.com, which is really a glorious clearinghouse of shit that I update sometimes. <laughs> um, on Twitter, I'm at Sarah J. Benincasa. On Instagram, I'm at Sarah J. Benincasa. Oh, I have Vine, but I haven't done anything with it in a while. Snapchat, I'm like, what? I don't get it's It's a, so much work. It's a lot to do. Um, but I'm also at sarahbenincasa.tumblr.com. But I'm on Twitter all the time, so you can say hi to me there. And I will probably say hi back. Yeah. You're very communicative, and it's a flood of funny and ideas, which is oh, awesome. Oh, thank you. And by Real Artists Have Day Jobs. It's good. It's called Real Artists Have Day Jobs and Other... Real Artists Have Day Jobs and Other Awesome Things They Don't Tell You in School. Nice. And it's very affirming and positive and um, funny. And there is some stuff about my time in radio for sure. And... But... but So there, it's a little bit of memoir, but it's basically funny like very kind-hearted advice based on the many times i've fucked up and the very few times i've gotten something right the first time oh cool so it's definitely not preachy you know it's kind of right. like hey man let me tell you don't do this here's some shit i did do this instead i bet it'll work better all right right it's like the universal through the specific right of you're sharing your experiences and yes then other perhaps people can that's relate a more to sophisticated way of <laughs> swinging it than being an old man at a bar voice being like hey anytime you want to be an old man at a bar voice i love that's that voice. major tingles <laughs> Uh, so here are our final questions. They don't have anything to do with your obsession, but they can if you want. Good. If you could perform a musical duet with any animal, what animal would it be and why? It would be the sloth, baby sloth, because baby sloths are trending really well right now. And I feel <laughs> like I'd get a lot of traction Okay. from that. What kind of musical duet would you do? Are you a musical person? Do you sing? Do you dance? I don't sing, but I can tell you that we would actually do, um, we, would, we would do a, a cover uh, we would do a dead prez cover and it would be <laughs> it would be a very violent and intense and you know really racially charged would cover. the sloth be up tempo would or would the sloth be dragging down the beat 
I can't really say until I <laughs> engage with a particular sloth. You know, we're going to find that rhythm between us, yeah. you know, which is something you see, you know, with dead prez as well. Like, they, you know, finding the rhythm between uh, in a partnership. And that's <laughs> what our work would be. About. Nice. Nice. You know, and also about waking up the world. Right. I look forward to that single dropping. Uh, if someone made a statue of you after you died, what would you want your pose to be? Just flipping somebody off <laughs> while taking a shit. <laughs> That's how I want my children to remember me. That would be your legacy. You know, would you like it in a public park? Yeah, very in public. A I want, I want it, no, I want a children's playground. A children's playground, uh, shitting and flipping. Mm -hmm. The Sarah Ben and Costa Children's statue. playground at a school, at a public school. <laughs> I want taxpayer money to go into this. Perfect, perfect. Vengeance. I would like it to be sculpted. Gosh, there's so many people I respect in the art world. Um, but I would like it to be sculpted by... Uh, hmm. Do you know a lot of sculptors by name? Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, I would like it to be sculpted by the sculptor for whom I posed once. Um and then later found out he was working on a sculpture, uh, uh, submitting a sculpture. I don't know if he got the, the, the gig, but it was supposed to be a sculpture of Senator Barbara Jordan, <laughs> an African-American woman who I believe was in a wheelchair. But he paid me to stand around naked for a while in a fancy <laughs> loft. And, you know, I, so I would want him to do it. That's nice. That's nice. The final question for everyone on the podcast is what is happiness? That's a really great question. Happiness is feeling like you've made most of the right moves <laughs> and feeling that you are uh, a force for good in the world and that the world is imparting goodness to you. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for doing the podcast. Of course. Thank you. It was awesome to be here. Awesome. Everybody subscribe. <laughs> that is our podcast. You've been listening to Obsessed. Joseph Scrimshaw and his guest shared some stories with the rest. Rate five stars if you're impressed. Hey, guys. Yeah.